Now you guys are going to be competing head to head for that coveted title of Forge and Fire champion and a check for $10,000. Today in the Forge, we're going to put a twist on one of our classic forging competitions. You guys see you've got a cloth in front of you. Why don't you go ahead and pull those off for me? You make your blades out of that big suspension bridge cable between 13 and 15 inches. Your time starts now. My name is Brian Dana Custis. I'm 41 years old. When I was 14 years old, I made a screwdriver. And as soon as I saw a hammer hit hot metal, there was never any coming back. I'm looking at the two cables, and I'm thinking the big cable is going to be easier to get a 13 to 15 inch blade. I'm twisting my cables. I want to get it twisted up as tight as I absolutely can. I've got to try to drive everything together by smacking the, the billet down on the floor, hoping that my welds will be better. It looks like it's compressing my material just fine, so I'm feeling pretty good. Brian just quenched. Let's see if Brian likes that hardness. If we got it. My name is Walter Baranowski. I'm the fourth generation metal worker. My grandfather in the Philippines was a bladesmith. My father was a welder. And there was always like a deep calling. I started making knives when I was 18 and haven't stopped since. I probably don't need all of these pieces, so I'm gonna pull two of them out. I'm gonna work down each one of these smaller pieces into its own billet, make a stack, forge weld them together. I keep looking at these bars and I'm really telling myself, dude, you don't have enough steel. Oh man, I'm freaking out. I ain't got time to sit around and think about what the heck I'm doing. I decide I'm gonna go with making another bar. One more. I get the third bar made and I need to get these three bars forge welded together. At this point, I have zero room for error. Walter's way behind. You've got to start shaping a knife. Yeah. Right now, the clock is ticking down, and I stick this blade into the forge, just try and please God, get hot enough. Going for a yeah. winch. Walter is shaking his head yes. He's singing like a canary with the file. It sounds good to me. My name is Paul Stefano. I'm 26 years old, and I'm an EMT for the New York City Fire Department. For me, bladesmithing is purely an artistic outlet. I like blades as forms of art because it's brutal, but it can also be elegant. That's kind of something you don't see often in other forms of art. I've made cable Damascus before. I'm trying to keep it thick so that when I go over to the grinder, I can dig deep and carve out any bad welds along the edge of the knife. With Cable Damascus, the outside is always going to have bad weld, no matter what. So I want to grind most of that away. I finally finished grinding. I think my welds look solid. Now I have to try to hurry up and forge out the blade because I lost time grinding. I didn't quite get to everything I wanted, but I'm happy with the knife I finished for this round. Paul went in. This is the right time to be quenching. I like it. I feel good. Five, four, three, two, one. Vice Smith, turn off your machines, put down your work. This round is over. All right, guys, you can take a breath. You're all making it into round two of the competition. We're going to ask you guys to add handles to your blades, making them fully functioning weapons. And that time starts now. My first objective in this round is to get all that material ground off because they told me it was too heavy. It's been about an hour at the grinder, and I'm realizing that it's time to move on to my handle. My plan is to put these two pieces of wood together, super glue them just a little bit so that I can get a hole through both slabs of wood at the same time and keep everything lined up. I'm worried about spending too much time on this. I've got to move on to the next step. I've done wire inlay before, but not quite under this sort of an extreme circumstance. <laughs> I plan on using four pieces of twisted wire and laying them at opposing angles like that. My blade's looking good. I start setting myself up to make the knife scales. Is Walter cutting the shape out right now? Bad move. To me, it's a waste, because he's going to have to get up to that grinder and reshape those once they're on anyway. So you would have wanted to see him glue them on the handle itself. If you're going to use that I technique. Cat glue. Oh. I just screwed up big time. Now he has two right side scales. He's going to have to redo it. This is going to cost me some time, but I have to do it over. I just got to relax, accept what happened, and keep moving on. 
I've not done any kind of twisted or braided wire like this on a handle before, but I need to make it happen fast. My plan of attack is to run two strips of the wire kind of on an angle inlaid into the handle. He's doing like a three quarter wrap. So when the scales go together, the ends of the wire will be between the tang and the scale. I'm running out of time. I'm going into panic mode. So I glue the handle scales on, and I'm not going to sit around and wait for everything to dry. I'm going to start putting the finished edge on this knife. The first thing I do is I go over to the handle material and try to find a big block that I know will fit the width of the handle that I forged. My handle's feeling good. Now I'm going to focus on twisting up the wire. The easiest way to get a wire attached is to drill a hole where you're starting, cut a channel for it to sit in, wrap it, drill a hole, slide it all the way through the handle material and glue it. It wouldn't go anywhere. Paul's kind of gone down that road that I was hoping he'd go down. I think it's time to work on the blade edge. When I rock the blade back and forth, it's to create a convex edge or an apple seed edge where it brings the edge in so it's sharp, but it leaves a little bit of extra meat so the blade edge should be stronger. My blade isn't as pretty as I wanted it to be, but I'm just hoping that my edge holds up to the horn test. Five, four, three, two, one. Put down your tools, put your blades down. This round is over. Good job, man. Oh, yeah, brother. Blade Smiths, welcome to the strength test, the animal horn chop. To test the strength and durability of your edge, as well as the overall construction of your knives, I'll be chopping into these animal horns. Remember, this test is all about what those horns do to your knives, and not what your knives do to the horns. Brian, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Oh, Brian, you took a lot of the weight out of this blade, and thank you very much for that. Your edge held up great. The handle is a, is a bit small right here. I'm not getting a good grip on my pointer finger where I really get a lot of control. But in all, it's a strong blade. It's a good looking blade. Just a little bit of issue on the handle here. Thank you very much. All right, Walter, can you hear your heartbeat yet? It's in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty nervous about this test. All right, Walter, this is, a, this is a cool knife. I like this thing. As for the edge, there is one deflection right there. It's a deflection of the edge and also a delamination of one of the wires of the cable. So it's kind of popped out, and it's sharp if I run my finger this way. But the rest of your edge is still nice and sharp. All in all, nice job. Thank you, sir. All right, Paul, you're up. You ready for this? Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm not sure if my edge will hold up. All right, Paul, this is a chopper, man. As it stands, there's a little edge deflection right here. You can, you can feel it, you can hear it. Moving back to your handle here, the contouring you have on this handle is just a little too narrow in the front here and in the back here, but all in all, it's, it's strong and it did really well. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, this is the water tube slice. To find out how sharp your edges are, I will take your knife and try to cut through these water tubes. Brian, you're up first. You ready for this? Absolutely. Splashed in here. All right, Brian, let's talk about your knife here. It is a light and fast blade, and it cut cleanly. That's one of the cleanest cuts we've had on water tubes. Overall, sir? A little cut. Thank you. Walter, your turn, sir. Ready? Let's do this. Let's do this. All right, Walter, your edge is sharp. 
got a clean cut through the water tubes. What I like about this is the balance is right to be able to control this blade. Overall, sir, it'll cut. Dream come true hearing you say that. All right, Paul, your turn. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, Paul, your edge here cut cleanly on these water tubes. There is some weight to this blade, but it will cut. Thank you. All right, guys, you all performed extremely well, and it came down to extremely minor details. Somebody is not going to be moving forward into round three of the competition, and that bladesmith is Paul. Ben Abbott's going to tell you why. Well, Paul, all of the blades out there had either a handle issue or a blade issue. Unfortunately, yours had both. Paul, you clearly put out a lot of effort, but it's time you leave the forge floor. Thanks, guys. I had a good time. Congrats, Great guys. work, man. You are man. I'm pretty disappointed I'm going home, but I'm, I'm going to keep at it, keep making knives. I came to try and win. I didn't win, so I'm not particularly happy about it, but I had a fun time.